Hello, Internet. James Allen from Out of Eight. Is it any playing real-time strategy game Rusted Warfare? The game's kind of a combination of Supreme Commander and Command and Conquer, except way simplified. The uh, game actually has a good number of game modes and single player. It has uh, scripted missions, uh, where you know you're up against a large number of enemies. It has skirmish mode, which I'll show off in a little bit. It's challenge mode, where it has a uh, different uh, you know, objectives you have to do there. It has endless survival mode on a couple maps. Uh, you can also customize your map in the sandbox mode and then play them in uh, kind of a skirmish. You can also go on to online multiplayer, uh, which is actually multi-platform, which is pretty interesting, and cross-platform, where you can play against people that have the Linux and the Android version of the game online, which is pretty cool. Uh, that you can, you know, have that kind of uh, compatibility there. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'll do a skirmish game against the AI. We'll just do a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the maps are not... There's not a lot of them. There's no randomization in it. A lot of the uh, designs are kind of, uh, you know, fanciful, I would say. Uh, we'll pick this one, though. I'm going to dial it down to easy difficulty so that uh, I don't have to <laughs> concentrate too much on it. And there are some advanced options that you can do, but we'll just start here. Alright, so uh, inside the game there's only one uh, resource, which is cash. Uh, and cash is used for basically everything. Uh, buying units, building new things. You don't have to worry about power or, or metal or any sort of res uh, resource chains or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to uh, have my two builders work together here, and they're going to kind of explore out. Uh, there's also no auto-explore or anything like that. Um, so it's a lot of micromanagement, as you'll see. There's no uh, infinite queues. You can't queue things up beyond... Um, what you can av uh, afford to begin with. I mean, there's nothing on this map. Well, we might be building some fabricators. You can build fabricators which can generate resources on any location. No, oh, there's one. All right, go down there. I'm going to try to do this first. Plus, I'm uh, on easy, so I'm not too worried about it. Let's see, there was one right there. It wasn't there. All right, let me actually queue up a bunch of waypoints here. There you go, I'll keep it pretty busy. So you can hold down shift and do uh, multiple things there. So I'm actually going to get uh, these couple of resource points up, and I'll actually probably build my base over here, I imagine. This guy's got to be probably over here. Uh, you get a different mix of units. You get land units, air units, sea units, and mech units. And there's the usual, you know, rock, paper, scissors type counters there where certain units can attack certain other types of units. Yeah, this is going to be fairly hotly contested, I imagine. So we're going to kind of queue stuff up over here. So we'll probably, I'm actually probably going to focus on air factories, to be honest. So let's get my factories up. Yep, yep, there they are. And there they are. And they've already got a bunch of units up, which is unfortunate. So we're going to need some tanks while we wait for the rest of the stuff to build. So then we're going to put these guys over here. So you see, pretty simplistic uh, 2D sprites. Actually, I want to upgrade this. Uh, you can upgrade things to Tier 2, which unlocks more advanced units. Um, but as you can see, there's no infinite queues. You have to, um, you know, micromanage all that stuff and basically just swap back and forth once you have enough resources to build stuff. So, kind of annoying. Um, other than the factories, you get defensive options. There's some turrets you can build. The AI loves to build turrets. I'm going to take out his little thing there. So basically, you just kind of 
switch between these buildings and once you have enough cash you can build something else. So it's upgraded to tier 2 which gives me gunships and bombers and missile airships. Um, and you can see the little tool tips at the bottom of the screen that tell you uh, you know what you can uh, build. Oh, go after that. Not you. Okay, they're running away. All right, we need to start building some uh, some more resource things here. So we need some fabricators up. I'm attack him. Yeah, I have like, no units. That's the problem is you gotta wait. It's all it's just cash, so you gotta have to wait for the cash to come up back up. I actually probably need a repair bay too. But there's so f not very many resources on this map. Oh, and I lost that. They attacked my other thing, so that's unfortunate too. That's probably why my resources are so low. I wasn't even paying attention. Pretty fast paced game. It doesn't take a lot of uh uh effort to get a fairly significant amount of uh, resources going. I actually probably should have built some torts down there. That's alright. Yeah, oh, there you go. I need to build a whole base and everything down there. Now you guys hang back. Again, a lot of micro. There, there's no special powers or anything you have to do, but a lot of micro with, uh, you know, going back and forth and moving stuff around. You guys need to build that extractor again. I obviously need to turret this thing up. Just say they can't swarm in and take it. You can see units will automatically attack when they come into range, but they won't move out of their current position to chase something down unless you give an attack move order. Alright, so... Another thing you can do is you can actually upgrade your extractors, which will uh, generate more resources, so... Yeah, that's basically going to take care of that. I actually might build one more. Right over there. And basically, it's just a matter of uh, just building enough stuff. You really need to have a lot of resources because the headquarters have these really powerful uh, missile launchers, uh, which will take down basically uh, anything that. Uh, isn't a big mass of like tier 2 units. You guys need to pay attention. Oh good, I don't have very many anti-air units. That's awesome. Let's build some interceptors in. Alright, well, let's build some uh, anti-air charts then. Need a repair bay too, among other things. And then that's basically it. You know, you just upgraded tier two. 
and uh, you know, that's basically it. You can do an experimental for the experimental units, but it's super expensive. You see, eleven thousand dollars. That's really kind of an end game thing for really huge games with a lot of resources on it. I want to get this repair bay up though. Let's do it right there. You have some hotkeys for selecting all of the uh, all the units at once. So they're going to start repairing those units, and I need to start spending some resources. I really need more resources. Let me upgrade this once I get twelve hundred. Move these guys back. So the game is uh, okay against the AI. The AI is decent enough to uh, play skirmishes against. It really shines more uh, playing online against actual human opponents. There's no different factions in the game. Everybody gets the same units, which is all right. You know, if you're not going to ma really make different factions, I mean, a lot of games that has different factions, they're really just the same units, just a different skin or whatever. Um, so at least here they're not really, you know, trying to fool you with that. Let's see if they have an extractor over there. They have a bunch of base. They have a basically another base. What else do I want to do here? And build a bomber, actually. I don't think I have enough stuff to go after that. Nope. Go back. Took out some things, but that's pretty heavily defended. I might even just avoid that for right now. Alright, so what did I say? I wanted a bomber. And that's the problem is that you're kind of at the mercy of the map design and how many. Well, shoot. Yeah, go attack that thing. Alright. Boats. And then build another land factory. One for tier two. Ah, crap. I was wondering where that uh, those noises were coming from. All right, so let's tier two that, and then I need a. C thing, I guess. There's a sub. Yeah, I don't even... I don't have the counters for this. So basically the AI <laughs> is going to basically win because I don't have any ocean counters because I didn't build any uh, sea factories. So I'm going to get my base wiped basically. Yeah, they're going to destroy this before it even gets built. So, good job by the AI. Yeah, none of these things have, uh... Yeah, it's like not even worth doing that. Let's 
Got some hover tanks. Definitely not one of my best games, that is for sure. <laughs> They're just gonna eliminate each other. Uh, one of the problems with this game, it's a lot of stalemating, especially in the middle, uh, because on maps where there aren't very many resources, you can build defenses fairly cheaply. Um, and then, like I said, with the headquarters having the missile ability, um, you can really repel most attacks. Um, and the other side can't really do the, the final blow. Really what happens is who, if you can get nukes going and nuke their base, that's basically what the end game ends up being. Although the AI here, because I'm doing too much talking, is going to probably eliminate most of my, uh, my base here in the middle. And we'll just kind of let it do it. Um, like I said, you know, it's pretty simplistic, which is what you would expect for a game that's, you know, on a mobile device. Uh, although, I think that playing it on the PC with a larger screen to be able to see more is probably more preferable. Um, I wish that it was a little bit less micro-intensive. Uh, you know, doing some sort of uh, queue, you know, alternate between tanks and laser tanks forever. You know, as long as you can resource it, uh, you know, afford it. Uh, having some sort of, you know, click on this building and then make it whenever you can. Uh, sort of deal would be nice. Uh, so there's some, you know, usability issues that are in the game that really kind of hold it back a little bit. Uh, also doesn't have that much uh, depth when compared to a lot of the contemporary real-time strategy games that have come out. You know, there's only one resource in the game, so you don't have to worry about power or metal or anything like that. Uh, or any combination of different things. Uh, you know, the countering system is pretty basic. You can either go after the land units, air units, or sea units. So it's really just a matter of which of those you end up building, which ones the other players end up building, and then whether you know you built the right stuff or not. Like here I didn't do any sea uh, stuff and the AI did, and I didn't really have a counter for that. Uh, plus I wasn't really paying 100% attention either, uh, which is not good in a, a faster paced game here. So, you know, the game doesn't really add anything innovative to the genre. If anything, it removes stuff to make it more approachable. Um, you know, it's like Supreme Commander without all the economic uh, depth. You do get, or you can get, large numbers of units if there's a lot of resources available in the map. Um, has pretty tedious endgame cleanup because you actually have to go in and destroy not just their headquarters, but every single unit they have on the map. Uh, which is pretty annoying when you're trying to chase, you know, that one builder that keeps going around and, you know, building extractors and then affording a little land factory and stuff like that. Um, you know, if you're looking for more depth uh, in your real-time strategy game, and you pick something up like Machine of Wars 3, uh, which came out a couple years ago. Uh, this game is very inexpensive. It's only five bucks. Um, and it plays more like a classic real-time strategy game but I think that even with uh, the number of game modes, there aren't random maps. The maps themselves are kind of, uh, you know, you see the different textures here, but there's actually no elevation changes or anything. It's just visual. Um, and a lot of the maps are kind of hokey in design and kind of gamey, I guess, is another way of referring to it. Um, 
you know, the missions can be difficult simply because they put a bunch of, uh, you know, enemy units against you. I do like having the cross-platform multiplayer where you can play people on Android or Linux and Windows at all at the same time, which is pretty cool. Um, the game doesn't have any tutorials, so no manual, so you really have to learn it yourself. Um, so, you know, overall the features uh, in terms of the interface, uh, you know, the map variety, tutorials, the um, amount of units, the type of units, there's only, you know, one faction in the game, so there's no variety there. You, only one resource. There's a lot of little limitations that kind of add up inability to queue units up, inability to have infinite queues, inability to uh, auto explore. They all just kind of add up to kind of do, you know, it's a very cheap and quick RTS game, but I don't think it really has the staying power of longevity um, unless you really get hooked into the multiplayer. And I think it's this is more really designed for a mobile device uh, than it is for, you know, uh, where you have a lot of RTS games on the PC to compete with there. So. Uh, that's all I have for today. Until next time, bye now.